Good evening, everyone. Today is April the 11th, Tuesday, 2023. It's 5 p.m., and today we're having a study session uh, presented by Tom from TIFA, and the presentation is in regards to the budget and the audit. Mm -hmm. Tom, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Council Chair. Um, I just uh, want to start off by uh, saying that this is, you know, every year when we do our budget, we always have a study session uh, to be able to answer any questions you guys might have about the audit report and, and also the budget. This year is unique. Uh, we received the audit report later than usual. We're doing the budget earlier than usual, so we've got them both on the same agenda for the same day. So uh, I'm here to answer questions on either one of them. Okay. Uh, first, uh, as you received our budget report, or audit right. report, I'm sorry, uh, the bound booklet, um, it has, you know, the standards, the standard report as, as usual. Um, I wanted to point out, uh, it, was, it was, you know, a question last year, I know, uh, Council Chair, that you had about our fund balance. You know, we had a lot of money. It looked like we had a lot of money in the bank. Question not, that was the next question I was going to ask you. Before. So, I've been, so I've been researching and researching. And finally, I was discussing with the auditors, it's, it's misleading, actually, the number. Uh, it says we have a fund balance of approximately $5 million. Right. But half of that is actually the money that's collected that we get July 1st for next year's budget. So that's actually not money in the savings. We only have half of that in the savings, really. So you really have 2.5. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's a receivable. They for some reason they right. they lump the receivables into the the fund balance for some reason. So in fact, even talking with the, the comptroller, she was surprised they do that too. But that's just how they do it. So it's a little misleading in the report. But uh, but that that's what we have. Roughly half of that actually cash and cash equivalents. And, and usually, as I do every year, uh, you know, for those in the audience and on Zoom that are not familiar with TIFA, uh, you know, obviously as a tax capture type of entity, can you just give at least a sentence or two just briefly describing it? Because a lot of people are not familiar with what TIFA is if they're not familiar with city government. For sure, like. sure. sure. T TIFA stands for the Tax Increment Finance Authority. Uh, it was established in Dearborn Heights in 1986. Uh, it allows, it's uh, basically an economic development tool that allows the, the city through the, actually the TIF uh, authority, the Tax Increment Finance Authority, to capture funds, uh, and a lot of it, you know, is money that would have otherwise have gone outside the city uh, to other taxing entities that we're able to keep and then reinvest back into the community through projects that are approved through our, our TIFA plan that was established when it was set up in 1986. So notable uh, projects have been uh, obviously the Justice Center. We're paying the bond on that every year. Uh, also, we have the um, you know, the Beach Daily project was their first project. Uh, they're completely redoing the South Beach Daily uh, road that beforehand was just like a two-lane road with dirt curbs and. So that was the first major one, but you know we do basically uh, we help with infrastructure improvements and um, uh, business grants, things like that. Okay, and I, I know you've also uh, talked at one point about doing some work on Van Born, the Van Born corridor. I see that as a part of your um, asks or a part of our asks, I should say. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, do you want me to move on to the budget now, or? No, no, just we'll, we'll continue with this, but I'm just saying in oh, general, yeah, so in general. people can have a little better oh. understanding as to what TIFA is, because yep. uh, I can tell you quite honestly, like for myself, mm -hmm. prior to nine years back, prior to getting on uh, city council, you know, I, I'd heard the term every now and then, but I had no idea what it was, so mm -hmm. that's why I always prefer to have just a briefly for the audience, those in the audience. Sure. Uh, council members, anybody have a question in regards to the audit first, and then he's going to go into the budget part. No, I just want to thank him for all they do. My dad used to be on the TIFA board, so I know about it. I'm in the district. Oh, good. So we appreciate them. Sure. And, and for those in the audience, I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Councilwoman. Uh, the TIFA district is not the whole city. It's just different sections of the city. Right. So it is not the whole city. So I, I, I get every now and then people asking me, about different projects, yeah. and it's not in every particular district. It's it's the part of Dearborn Heights that's south of Michigan Avenue and west of Telegraph. Right. So right. Kind of hard with our city shape to really explain, but that's the best way to explain it. South right. of Michigan Avenue and west of Telegraph. Yeah. Otherwise known as behind the home, everything behind the Home Depot. Yeah. Okay. Or in front of the Home Depot, depending on yeah, true. How, true. True. how you look at it. True. <laughs> okay. Uh, any questions, uh, Councilman? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> well, we'll go ahead and go into the budget at this point. Okay, so you all received a copy of our budget that the TIFA board uh, approved at its meeting, and as according to state act, we forward it now to the city council uh, for your uh, concurrence, your approval. Uh, it's kind of straightforward. Uh, as you notice on there, it has last year's budget, approved budget, and then this year's uh, proposed budget. 
uh, just run through. We have the estimated TIF revenue uh, listed there. If I can interrupt you for just a sec. Sure. So for the council members, he's referencing 9H. The only reason we do um, a study session ahead of time um, is because so the presentation is not done during the regular council meeting. So he's referencing 9H on our regular city council agenda. Right. Okay. So uh, kind of jumping right into it, the TIF revenue is listed there, the estimated tax capture. Uh, there's the city portion of Justice Center bond. Uh, there's an agreement that part of all the ta the revenue from uh, like tickets and whatnot, there's a portion of that that gets applied towards paying off the bond of the, the Justice Center. Uh, it's the TIFA's bond. We, we're responsible for the whole bond, and then there's a contribution from those tickets, basically, uh, revenues from the court that get uh, reimburse us for that. So that's why it's shown as uh, income there, as revenue. And then you'll see we have a fund balance appropriation uh, this year, uh, estimating over 1.1 million. Um, there's a reason for that. I'll get down in, in when we get into the, uh, the expenses. Um, so when you look at the first section of expenses, those are fixed right off the top. You know, we're responsible for the Justice Center bond and princ uh, the principal and interest. So those numbers are, are, are locked in. Those are, we take those first right out. When, when is that expected to be paid off? Ooh, off the top of my How head. How many years left, roughly? Yeah, it's a 30-year bond, so like 20, yeah. 2030. Oh, right around yeah. the corner. Yeah, and when we refinanced, I don't know if that changed the date at all, but um, yeah, roughly okay. in the 2030s. So, okay, so that's that. Uh, the library bond, we, as you know, we pay also a, a portion of the library bond. It's a city's bond for the J JFK library, but we contribute 42.6% uh, uh, of that each year to help pay that off. So that's that's our, also one of our bond obligations. Uh, next, we get into our administration. Uh, that's a combination of items, uh, as you see there in the notes. Um, you know, city contribution. We have an agreement with the city. We give them. Uh, we give the city six percent of our estimated uh, TIF revenue uh, for uh, administrative work that the city does for us throughout the year. Um, then we have the salaries, benefits, FICA. That number if, includes. If I can interrupt you there, sure. So I just want to clarify. Uh, that's for work done on your behalf by the city. It is not reimbursing the city for work they're doing on behalf of uh, one of the city work. Right, right. It's because uh, when when they set up the TIFAs, it was kind of a. A testy subject of if TIFAs could give cities money just for administration, why not? And there is allow an allowance there uh, at the time, you know, it was negotiated that we can give the city because we have the city do handle like our financing for our, our finances for us. Whereas we could have, say, just gone and hired, you know, John Smith's CPA to be our CPA and not run everything through the books. But they said, well, for transparency issues, it's good to have everything, you know have the city manage the money uh, for, well, at our, at the TIFA board's, you know, direction, uh, but they write the checks and, you know, invest the money and whatnot at our so direction. So a million dollar question when I seen that, mm -hmm. uh, just visually looking at it, it sounds like, I, I'm trying to say it in, a, in probably the sweetest, nicest way, it, for a smaller administration or smaller organization or entity, an administrative fee of proposed now 312000 seems a little high. What, what types of things are done well, for that type of money? Because the alternative, obviously, is to use that money for yeah. property, well, the, for uh, city improvements, obviously. Yeah. But like I said, the, the 150 that's an obligation right from 1986, 6%. That's right, you know, it's just an automatic number, 6% of the estimated TIF revenue mm -hmm. at the top. So that's dictated by that. So the 2.5 million that's the estimated, so 6% is the 150,000. So that's right there. Now, then when you get into the salaries, benefits, and FICA, uh, that includes two employees, one full-time administrator director and one part-time uh, office secretary. The full-time, of course, has the benefits and, and, you know, we have the FICA obligations and whatnot, so that's rolled into that plus. Okay, so it includes the salary. Yes, yes. Okay, that makes more yeah, sense. Yeah, and benefits, you know, right, health right. benefits. Okay. Plus, plus also, um, we even keep a little cushion in there in case we have to hire any kind of part-time help through the year or, you know, or if, if uh, expenses go up, you know, you know, health care can fluctuate. So that's also, there's a padding in there for that too a little bit, so. So that's in there. Then the professional services, that's a combination of, you know, if we need uh, funds for auditors, attorneys, consultants, things like that. They used to be, we used to kind of think of them separately, but now we just kind of, 
think of them together as a group. Then okay. you know, obviously, just things like office supplies and mileage reimbursement. So that's uh, that's the admin section. Uh, then under the expenses, uh, they're pretty straightforward. Um, I'll point out Van Boren since it was brought up. Um, uh, we had in previous years put 100,000 aside for the Van Boren project, kind of in anticipation, but we weren't using it, so uh, we, we knocked it that to 50,000. But we did increase the commercial rehab program by an additional 75, I mean additional 25,000 up to 75 because that that's our grant program that we give businesses who need to freshen up their buildings on the outsides and whatnot. And now that the uh, overlay district is in the process of being approved, it looks pretty close. Um, you know, there's going to be these new standards that everybody's going to have to meet when they do projects and stuff. So we're anticipating there may be some more people, you know, looking to do some work and needing some help. So we figured, well, we'll, we'll put more of the funds there right now because that may be a more is, immediate. Is there a, is there a financial um, a cap or anything like that as far as somebody applying for the for the loan? loan? Or the, well, it's it's a grant actually. Oh, grant? Uh, yeah. Um, the standard grant is five thousand dollars. It's a, it's a matching grant up to five thousand. But, but if but it's you, a larger project, they can ask the board. Uh, there have been times where people apply to the board. Uh, once it was a very large project, they awarded twenty thousand, and a few times they awarded ten thousand. I'm saying there's no income to qualify. So in other words, it, it's not for a particular income right. limit or. Right. Or, it's just right. open to businesses who are in the TIFA district, who uh, like say uh, they want to redo the facade of their building, put a new sign out, and it's going to cost them say it costs them sixteen thousand dollars. Um, if they if they just want to take the the five thousand uh, dollar grant, we can take care of that administratively, you know, between uh, the administrator and the and the chairman. But if they want say to go for eight thousand, you know, uh, we can they they would apply to the board, ask the board for consideration for a higher amount. Uh, so it is only west of Telegraph, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. yep. So then also um, another one I said I would point out especially here, if you look down the second from the bottom on the expenses, the sewers, uh, you know, we've been working with the administration the past year. Uh, they've been putting together a capital improvements uh, uh, list of, of uh, dealing with um, improvements that need to be done in the city. Uh, I was talking with the city engineer, and he said the, the, the Big number one top priority so far, uh, he told me, would be sewers, uh, at least at this point in time. That's what he's looking at would be the sewers. Uh, so uh, we were able to contribute 1.5 million towards that, oh, which is good. an unusual unusual for us, but the city really needs you know some help. So we were able to take that basically from that fund balance, the half of the half that we thought <laughs> we had. Um, so we, you know that, that that's going to help with that. At least at this point in time, you know, if there's a higher priority that comes up, you know, that can be obviously we could do you know a budget amendment if there's if something changed. But at this point in time, that was the estimated uh, uh, big need really for the city to help with. So that's where it can. And a lot of the other programs are kind of the standard. Nothing really changed. It's the same categories we have you know as in past years. Just maybe the numbers change a bit, but. If any of those, uh, if you have any questions on any okay. of those, any questions on a budget? Right. Yeah. What's uh, contingency stands for? Contingency, it's like you know, uh, for unexpected things. Uh, you know, like when you do a, a construction project, they say you should have like a fifteen percent contingency. You know, in your budget, you plan you know money for the unexpected. Uh, mm -hmm. So we put a, a number like that aside. At first, when the, when the auditors told us we should do it, we were figuring like fifteen percent. We we're looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars. But over time, we realized we didn't need that much. So we kind of whittled it down over the years to hundred thousand, just in case there's an emergency that comes up and 100%. we need something. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other council members? Now, obviously, we're going to vote on this when it comes up on the, or the council meeting, but uh, um, Tom just wanted to have some sort of early presentation, so we're not doing the full 15 minutes during the meeting. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Tom? Tom, um, thank you. Oh, thank you. Tom, um, thank you, as always. And, and thank you to our TIFA board and our staff. You know, we, you know it's a team effort. So. Absolutely. I thank them all. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thanks.